Welcome to CCRPG, where we open up our virtual table and play games with some good friends. I'm Bob, and I'll be running Lancer, an RPG by Miguel Lopez and Tom Parkinson Morgan. You can find it at Massive Press on itch.io. Last time, we followed our pilots as they left the spaceport city of Flus Delta in the search of answers. Why is Flus Delta infested with creatures? Where are the people? What happened here? Their search brought them here, to the base of a mountainous region defended by turrets, currently under siege by the local megafauna. Hoping to follow this thread, the DBC crew jumped to the aid of the defense in scattering this assault. After trading blows with the creatures, we left off as two mysterious mechs arrived, Concern and Valet. Let's return to the conflict now. I'm hey. concerned. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the new session. Uh, there are now more people on your battlefield. Um, so uh, we're going to start the new rounds. Uh, and at the start of the new rounds, um, the new third parties are going to activate first. Okay, hopefully they're friendly. So we're I, gonna, hope they're, I hope they're friendly. We're going to dive right into it. Uh, of the two, um, Concern looks like a very lithe bipedal mech. It is is heavily ornamented. It has like a cape going down one side of it, has rocket boosters on it. It seems to be carrying a spear and a machine pistol of some sort. The other one is a lot more boxy, kind of like um, service made valet. It has like a pile bunker on one arm and then just rows and rows and rows of rockets on its shoulders. Um, speaking of, uh, valet is going to activate first. Um, and as they do, um, they don't acknowledge you at all. Uh, they just kind of roll up onto the field, uh, and you'll instantly see, uh, all of its, uh, rocket pods just open, like all the rocket pods on its shoulder start to open. Uh, it is going to use volley, uh, pick characters in range 20 and line of sight. So let's see, let's see what's in range of it, huh? Uh, there are some men packs in range. Uh, there's some people that aren't us in range. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of people that All aren't right. us. All right, so uh, it is going to have to move first. So it is going to is going to activate boost to turn on its rockets. Uh, it's like back vernier. Uh, so it is going to move and boost a total of six hexes. Uh, off the side of the cliff where it was, landing down on the battlefield below. Okay. And that changes significantly what's within range of it. Oh, perfect. Okay, so it's going to designate four targets. Uh, it is going to target uh, the Nempax, the Terrafly, the Terrafly, and the Nempax. Ooh, good choice. I, I approve greatly. Uh, it picks all of As those. Chimera is yelling, "Danger close! <laughs> Danger close!" <laughs> um, they all have to make an agility save. So let's just do that real quick. So, uh, Nempax, Terrafly, Terrafly, Nempax. Um, oh, the Terrafly is still prone, right? I believe so. Yeah. Good. Um so uh Terrafly five rolled a one, there's no way it's it's succeeding. Uh Terrafly six. Uh he got a 19 and succeeds. Uh Nempax three uh got a five plus two is not enough and then nempax four got a five plus two which is not enough um so those enemies uh that failed all take four explosive damage um so that is terrafly five. Oh, uh well <laughs> uh funnily uh what happens um 
my my good friend Chimera is as the it. as the rocket like <laughs> flies past you, just an explosion of ichor uh, happens as the rocket contact uh, contacts this downed terrafly and just spatters over the side of your mech. Oh, I thought the explosion was going to hurt me. That's that's a better outcome. No, it uh, in center <laughs> it uh it it ball of fired the uh, the terrafly next to you. Um, I'm you're just with covered this. with terrafly guts right now. Look, look, I install window wipers for a reason. This exact reason. <laughs> so they all have armor, so they're only going to take three damage, and then the terrafly that's saved, uh, it only takes half, and then one armor. So, <clears throat> all right, uh, that is going to be valet's activation. Uh, after the third party's turn, it is back to your side. What do you do? Uh, were, were, were you going to do something? I, I, I'm trying to remember where we left off last session. Well, if I was, I was probably either going to shoot the Nempax or the Terrafly. Well, one of those is gone now. Uh, hmm. I don't remember, Bob. Did the, has Nempax 3 taken any noticeable damage? Uh, Nempax 3 just took a rocket hit, uh, and it was damaged before that. So it looks <laughs> like it's, it looks like it's a bit more hurt. It's actually significantly hurt. Um, this is the one that got structured last session. Okay, that was, that was the question I was going to ask. Cause I was like, yeah. that's the most important thing. Um, structured, nearly mortally wounded, you know, one of those words. Is that the one I like one shot structured? Uh, it might be. Did, I was going to say, Jay, did you want to start off with the first one? First the other, the other Nempax is pretty healthy. You guys haven't messed with the the wall Nempax much. Um, I could also go and put some lock-ons on some guys. I mean, I'll go if no one else really wants to, but... I don't think there's a world I actually, go first here, so you actually, go ahead. I could, I could, try, to, I could, I could try to shred the Nempax, the, the one that's closer to us. You mean the one that's right on top of you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll shred it if I uh, inflict lock-on on it. It's one of, is my part of my prophetic scanners. Oh, well, then go ahead. Why don't I go yeah. first so I can yeah, basically nuts. buff you guys when you attack. <clears throat> All right, you mean close. what I miss? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's why I'm uh, giving you lock-on. Uh, <laughs> All right, so... Um, I'll, I'll activate then. Uh, you see the sort of... Right now I'm invisible, but you see a shimmer as I... Uh, uh, as uh, suddenly my mech becomes visible again. Um, kind of a, a line passes through, like a, a, a shimmering line, and uh, reveals the rest of the mech. Um, and I will uh, take a lock-on quick action on Nimpax 3. Um, and, uh, when I inflict lock on, uh, that target also becomes shredded until the end of its next turn. Oh, nice. Um, so, so Nempax 3 will be, uh, shredded and, uh, has lock on. Um, uh, the other thing I'm going to do, uh, is I'll just skirmish with my auxil auxiliary mount. Um, so I'll attack with my two oracle lmgs um so let me so let me do that um since they're both auxiliary slots uh i can attack with both but the second one won't uh do any bonus damage um if that applies so the two rolls here all and right who's so this against 20 20 oh uh sorry uh nempax three okay um but I'm not going to use the lock on. Um, so uh, uh, I rolled a 23 on my first attack and a five on my second. Uh, 23 will hit and a five will miss. All right. So I just do two, uh, two, two damage, kinetic damage on Nimpax 3. Um, Wait, uh... I think it's yes. oh. the maximum he can even get, so... Actually, 
now that I look nope. at their numbering, three is the one that's not very injured. Four is the one who's gotten the shit kicked out of them. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. I thought Good the numbering know. was like off last time or something. Uh, it I'm was. Sure. It was, but I have it lined up. Um, All right. Yeah, I think you shot the far away <laughs> one. Uh, because there was another Nempax here as well, who is yeah. who's gone to the other the other realm now. He is he is gone and forgotten forevermore. Oh, Poor good. Guy. That means he's not coming back. Uh, actually, I was wrong, Chuck or Chuck Todd. Uh, looks like your weapon does a D three. So since you crit, you can re-roll it. Try and roll for a three. Um. Oh, okay. Um, because I rolled above a twenty. Yep. And he's shredded, um, so you'll you'll get all the damage you deal. Okay, so let let's roll the first one again, and I rolled a seven. So well, it doesn't. No, it doesn't matter. It's you just, just need to roll, roll the damage oh, over oh, again. Oh yeah, well I, I rolled a two. Still. Two two was your um, maximum, so two two takes effect. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I do two kinetic damage. He is shredded. Mm -hmm. Uh. So if he has armor resistance, that comes into play. Um. All right. Cool. So um. Uh, now let me just see. He's been locked on. We all know where the Nempax is. Um, as part of my spotter two talent at the end of my turn, if I did not move and I took the lock on quick tech action, I can lock on as a free action. So I'm gonna lock on. I'm gonna lock on uh Nempax four. Um, is is that the one that's damaged? That's the one that's very damaged. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll. Uh, lock on Nimpex 4. Um, part of the spotter 2 is when I do, do this uh, free action, lock on free action, I can also learn the target's armor, speed, evasion, e-defense, mech skills, curd HP, and share this information with allies. Um, so can I get um, the stats on Nimpex 4? Uh, do you have to pick one of those things? Uh, you can learn your targets. Uh, it seems like uh, no. I can learn the all target's right, just, armor speed. Uh, I'm not going to remember all of that, so tell me the things you care about knowing. Yeah, sure. Armor? Uh, one armor. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, uh, what's its uh, HP? Six. Okay, yeah, it's close. Um, and its evasion is? Ten. Okay. I don't really care He's about the rest. Boy. He's a quick boy. All right, cool. Uh, and with that, uh, 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 the LMGs on either side of the mech will retract back into the mech, uh, and it will sh the cloak will shimmer back on. Uh, and that's end of uh, Comet's turn. All right. Uh, well, speaking of the Nempax, Nempax 3 is going to take its turn now. Uh it's right next to Chimera, so I think it's just going to have to do do what it does. Um, firstly, we're going to see if it recharges its ability. It does. Hey, oh, congratulations, no. Mr. Nempax. It, you rolled a six on a D6. That's great. Hey, Bob, before, uh -huh. before, you, before you totally destroy me, am I still shredded? <laughs> because I thought it was like yep. base... Oh, I thought it went away when the terror I died. Uh, which one was the one that caused it? Oh, no, no, no. The it, one that died. No, it goes, it, it's, it usually the shred goes away at the end of its turn, but when it dies, it doesn't go away. I rolled it last time as you can remove it at the end of your turn. Okay. That, that so when you take a turn, bullshit. your shred will go away. That's what happened in the city as well. Okay, I, I couldn't remember. Thank you. Because it, it technically doesn't have turns now. I mean, I'm sad, but it makes sense to me. You're still covered in shredding ooze, regardless of whether it is alive or not. Um, so Nempax 3 is going to use his Rampage quick action, uh, which means it can move. Uh, da, 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 da. It's going to move straight through you. I'm going to uh, parry that. This isn't uh, an attack. Uh, you have to make a agility save. Oh, boy, it's been a while since I've looked this up. Um, agility is one, so... All right. You have a better than average chance of succeeding. 
<laughs> I rolled a one. Okay, so uh. Uh, one plus <laughs> one ain't gonna do it. Uh, so as it uh, rampages through your space, uh, you take four kinetic damage. This is fine. All right. And now, uh, with the rest of its power, it is going to spin on you and try to tear you apart with its claws. So that is... Uh, 19 versus evasion. Uh, let me check now. Pretty sure that'll do it. <laughs> uh, so you are going to take six kinetic damage. I am going to parry that. Okay, and what does that do? Uh, you gain resistance to all Remember damage. Remember what, what shredded does. Oh, that negates resistance. It God. negates resistance and armor. You're right, so, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, was it was that four? Six? Yeah, you're gonna take uh uh I just said it. I should remember six. this. Six. It is six kinetic. Yeah, I'm just I'm in denial at this point. Um yeah, I'll walk off six. That's a river in Egypt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not Dad today. <laughs> today it is Charles's damage. All right. Three uh, minutes in, I've already lost most of my um, HP. And then uh, interesting. It sees the way that this is all going here. It doesn't like doesn't like what you've done to it. Grumble, grumble. Uh, all right. So, um, now Chimera, uh, it is going to begin a movement, so that'll trigger your um, Overwatch if you want to use it. Yeah, I'll use it. So I'll strike with a melee attack. All right, yeah. Tell me what you're doing. Uh, I, I think at this point I'm just going to pull out my uh, my uh, battle axe and just kind of swing at it. Yeah, I probably still have it out. Actually, I, boy, it's been it's been a bit. Um, so we'll see how we do. I rolled a ooh, not doing good. Not doing good with those rolls today. Uh, I rolled a four. Ah, okay, four. Wait, no, I I get accuracy. I forgot about that because this is the first melee attack. Okay. I don't think it's gonna help, but I rolled a six. So that makes uh, it a ten. A six you... makes a ten. You hit its evasion. Oh. Cool. Um, I hit it for one damage. Ooh, uh, it is shredded at least, so you yeah, are yeah. gonna <laughs> you are gonna do that one damage. So that's nice. You nick uh -oh. it as it as it rushes by. Um, it is using its ability swift. Uh, once per round, it can boost during its turn as a free action. Um, so it is going to move. Uh, six. to here uh and then uh it is going to move another six. Oh nope uh the the problem with the sizes of hexes is like the size two in in lancer is the hardest thing to get to work with a grid oh perfect okay uh it is going to dash uh oh it's going to use the rest of its movement to move Straight at you, Comet, or where you used to be, at least. Okie doke. Uh, you're the small thing that keeps flickering there and then not there again. So it's 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 done trying to bite the big spiky thing. Uh, Probably a smart move. That is its turn. All right. And then with the end of the Nempax turn. Uh, the turn order rotates back around to the new mysterious add-ons to your group. Um, uh, 
Over your comm links, all of you hear a voice come over and just say, just says, we'll also be exterminating the creatures. Do not raise arms against us and we won't do the same to you. And then just it cuts out. Um, Concern is going to activate. Uh, It is going to activate its boost to activate its rock like its uh, vernier on its back so that it can move four and then four again down the wall towards the nem packs. Uh, can't quite get close enough to attack with its spear. Um, so as it's charging forward, you see um, the frame labeled concern take out a machine pistol and riddle it with bullets. Um, so he's free to use a lock on. <laughs> <once>. <laughs> My lock ons are for everyone attacking the pests. Uh, doesn't need it. Uh, he rolls a 17 plus 2 for a 19. Nice. Uh, and that is going to do... Oh, nice. Uh, it's just, it's just very simple. Straight up 2 damage, <laughs> which to Nempax 4 is only 1, because I don't think this one is shredded, is it? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, so Nempax 4 is just going to take 1 more damage. Cute. Uh, all right, so that is going to be Concern's turn. It is now y'all's side. Uh, if I activate, would I still be able to shoot Nimpax 4? Through Nimpax 3? Uh, yes. Yes, you would. Okay. Uh, do you guys mind? Uh, it yeah, is, it is large enough, though, that it would get soft cover. I kind of think Chimera should get it activate just so he can get shredded because there's still a terror fly down south and he's shredded. yeah i was gonna say i i wouldn't mind dropping my shred if possible uh i mean if i activate i may stop nempax 4 from getting a turn so it's your call if you want to get rid of the shred that's What's your fine. health at chuck five he's gonna get structured <laughs> Uh, it's your call, Chuck. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking. Um, honestly, Nempack Four isn't hurting anyone. Like, it's it's kind yeah. of doing its own business with the turds. Like, I think we can probably leave it to its own devices for a bit. Um, cut to I, thirty seconds later when Nempack Four is charging over Chimera. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't read ahead in the script. We'll fi- we'll find that out later on. All right. Um, Go ahead and activate them. Okay, uh, so I'll activate, and then you said at the end of my turn or at the yes. beginning of my turn? Yeah, at the end of your turn. Okay. Uh, hey, let's see. By the way, Bob, just to cut in real quick, Nempax 3 is no longer shredded. It only lasts until the end of its turn. So we can take that off. All right, gotcha. Okay, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to run up for Nempax 3 next to Orion, and then I'm going to pull out my... Um, my nail gun and shoot it with the nail gun. I was gonna say, aren't you gonna stabilize? But I guess that's true. Uh, yeah, that would be a smart thing to do. Because that takes a full action. So I mean, I'm oh, you could overheat. You could you you could uh yeah overcharge. If you <coughs> wanted to. Excuse me. Yeah, let me let me do that actually. Um, that is actually a better idea. So let me um. Because I think what you structured once this fight so far. Yeah, I have one structure from the original time we were on the um, planet. So uh, I'm, trying to remember, I'm trying to remember how that works. So I can repair. Um... You, you stabilize, which is a full action, and you consume one repair capacity in order to fully heal yourself. Yeah, let me do that, actually. All right, um, so that's your last repair cap? It is. Uh... And you go back up to uh, 15. And then I will um I'm put that back. Okay. Cool. repair and then yeah, then I will overcharge which will be my uh my 
first over turn. Say. Um, yep, so that'll cost you a heat. Yep. And that's not that big of a deal because I only have two heat now. And then I'm going to shoot it with the nail gun. Will you consume the lock on? That is something you can do if you wish. Um. Yeah, I'll consume the I'll consume the lock on. I think. So plus one accuracy. Okay, let's see how that does. Oh, I get one accuracy. I actually had that. Ooh, 23. I, I will take that. Nice. So, right. and then it has to succeed a um, hull save. Um, target is 12. All right. Well, uh, firstly, uh, we're going to go through the damage bit. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, um, 23 hits. Continue. Damage. Uh, What's the damage? Uh, roll your 1d6 again. See if you get higher than a 3. Sorry, I haven't been able to type today. Uh, no, nah, I did not. So it does three damage. All right, where, why do you have another damage on there? I'm not sure. Okay. You might want to take a look at your macros <laughs> and see why you have random damage showing <laughs> oh, up on your macro. It does, it does an additional you're, one kinetic damage, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you're rolling one. Not one die no, just, no, no. just a one I'm, in the, just a in the roll, i had to look at the roll 20 uh, macro it, it just treats it as a one like if you add additional damage to it it just says it's not it's not a dice roll just one so it's actually total four damage four damage okay that's what i was yeah. wondering so it does four minus the armor so it's going to take three total yep sorry about that all right uh now we can move on to the next thing Uh, which is the uh, whole save. What I'm waiting for here is, Charles, is I want you to do this in the proper order. So now that we've run past damage, now say the next part of your attack. So this is all part of the same attack. So the nail gun it shoots a nail in, and then if, if it be, say, whole save of 12, um, it becomes immobilized and shredded. Fails with whole save of 12. So. So it's it's part of the same it's part of the same attack. And then you take one heat, it looks like. Yep. Alright, it rolls a twenty plus three for a twenty-three. <laughs> I, I wanna I, I I have nothing to say. Um okay, well that was that was a turn. And you take one uh, heat from the impaler hand hail yep, nail gun. I already had that okay. on. Um I do remove my um shredded at the end of my turn. So uh, there's that at least going for me. Alright. Now I'm done. Sorry about that. All right. And now clear the lock on for Nimpex 3. All right. Chuck is no longer shredded. All right. Uh, Chimera looks good to go. Is that the end of your turn? Yes. All right. That means... I have two people to activate still, so I'm going to activate uh, Terrorfly 6. Uh, the bottom two turrets look sufficiently destroyed, um, so it is going to beeline hardy har har um, uh. towards Orion. And let's see, what's the, what kind of range are we working with? Decent range. Okay. Um, it is going to build up that oily acid spittle and project it straight at you, Orion, uh, as that arcs through the air with a. Seventeen versus evasion. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> all right and you're not are you uh are you shredded currently no i have that you were shredded from last session was i okay well then i guess i'm shredded i noticed you had a, a, a an icon on you before but i didn't know what it represented on CompCon, i have you as shredded okay uh ch -ch 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 -ch. 
Chimera is no longer, so I'll clear that on here. Um, all right, so that is going to be uh, three energy damage. Okay, so that takes me down to 12. And you are now shredded until the end of its next turn. Okay. So I think... Yeah, totally. One, two, three. Uh, and I don't think it can do anything else from where it is. No, no, it's gonna, it's gonna end its turn there. Okay. Uh, bop. All right. Uh, now it is back to y'all's time. Go ahead, Rock. Sure. Oh, you yeah. want to... Do you want to go to clear your shred or whatever? Uh, it's at the end of its turn because it's still alive. That's confusing. All right. Yeah. Um, I was I was a special case because my terrify already died. Uh, I guess I'm lucky and haven't been shredded yet, so I don't have to worry about that. Um. All right. Well, uh, I will stabilize and clear my heat, uh, and reload my gun because I believe I have uh spent that. Uh. Then I'm gonna overcharge. Uh, so I roll a d6 for heat. Uh, one. Oh, nice. Neat. Neat. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot Nempack four. Um, so the the lock on gives what accuracy? Yeah, one accuracy. Okay. Um, since you're uh next to me, uh, and you're consuming lock on, uh, this means you can roll twice. Uh on your attack right um and choose either resolve uh depending on how you you're gonna want to just not take into account the accuracy of that lock on though because shooting through soft cover is going to they're going to negate each other so it's all your other accuracies but that one will be negated by the soft cover i gotta i gotta add it all up because i'm gonna do a crack shot which will actually give me a difficulty as well, but also an accuracy. So that's negated. My armor or my gun is accurate. Uh, so I think I just have one accuracy then. One accuracy, right. roll twice, take better, I think. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, did we didn't we didn't really run into or discuss this before, but I can also re-roll my first attack each round, but I have to keep the second result. How does that work with Comet's reroll? This came up last time. You get to just choose whichever is better for his. Right, but can I use mine and his? Uh, so that's three rolls. You have to you have to choose to reroll for yours, right? So what would happen is you get the two right now from him. After you see both of those rolls, you can decide if you want to use yours. If Got you it. use yours, those first two disappear, and you have to choose whatever you roll. I'm into it. All right. Oh, okay. So if you don't like either, if you don't you... like either of these rolls, you can use your ability. Got it. Okay. Um, I. I feel like I should be having an accuracy from something else, but I must be crazy. Okay. So I'm going to roll now. Uh, you know, I'll fish for the crit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to take the first one. All right. Uh, so you rolled so, twice. Yep. So that is. So you rolled a 21 on your attack. Tw- 21. So that's a crit. I rolled max damage on it. Uh, and because I did crack shot, I'll do an extra five damage on it. It, it's right. dead, right? I don't need to have that it do its extra Nem stuff. Packs four. Uh, no, no, that's gonna that's gonna take it down to uh, it's the final structure. Uh, how do you finish it off? That's no, it's dead, right? Like so, yeah, I'm finishing it off. Okay. Uh, sorry, I thought you were saying no, it's not dead. <laughs> um, I just, I just will shoot through the legs of Nempax 3 as it just goes right up the butthole of Nempax 4. <laughs> and out its mouth. I don't oh. know what it does once the shot gets in there, but I'm sure it does some nasty shit. Yeah, it just it just smashes <laughs> off the wall and just, like, falls over in a heap, essentially. Ugh. That's gonna leave a mark. Uh, that is my turn. All right. Nice. 
Um, and the other groups have already used their turns. Um, have nothing to fire at. The turrets, I believe, are now... Uh, yes, uh, the turrets now are basically just aiming. Um, so they are not doing anything currently. What is the range of the turrets again? You are unsure. Okay. That works. Uh, so, Orion, you're the only one who has an, a turn left. Uh, okay. Let's see here. I am at nine heat. So, what I am going to do is use my redundant systems upgrade, which allows me to use stabilize as a quick action, as a charged ability, so now I'm down to one. Uh, so I will use that to reset my heat from nine to five, which I can do thanks to one of my frame's abilities. Whenever I clear all heat, I can choose to either clear it or set it to half. Um, so I'll use that to set it to half, so I'm still technically in the danger zone. <clears throat> and then I'll also use Stabilize to clear a status effect, so I am no longer shredded because through that... <laughs> Alright. That's efficient. I don't like shredded, man. I don't like shredded. I'm you're, gonna telling turn me, off. you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to turn on the uh, fly and uh, fire at it with my... Uh, let's fire with the Soul Pattern laser rifle. And, see, and go from there. So I will fire. I rolled an 18. Uh, 18 will definitely hit. So it takes one energy damage plus one burn. All right, so that is the terror fly. So that takes me up to six heat. Uh, so it's going to just oh. take the burn damage. Wait, wait, hold on. I forgot one thing. Uh, I just remembered. I keep on forgetting about this. Um... Nuclear Cavalier, <clears throat> the first attack roll you make in the danger roll, making the danger zone each turn adds two heat and one d6 damage. So I'm gonna roll a one d6. Four. All right, so that's four more damage. One, two, Plus three, four. Two heat, which is is damage to. To that uh, is, biologicals. That is energy damage to a biological. Yes. Yeah, so you technically did six more damage. Yes. By roasting the thing. Yes. <laughs> um, I keep on forgetting that exists, and I really need to stop, because that is one of the most important things in my build. And uh, <laughs> your soul powder and laser rifle adds another one heat, correct? Yep, which okay. takes me up to six heat. All right. Um, then screw it. I'm going to overcharge, which I have my first time this round, so I'm up to seven heat now. Uh, you, you're currently at a 1d3. Uh, you've used Can overcharge, I? yes. You've used overcharge okay. once this fight. And I will still overcharge. That's fine. I'll roll a 1d3. Roll 1d3, which is a one, so it takes me up to seven. And then I am going to fire my laser rifle one more time. This will not get the uh, extra heat plus damage bonus if it hits. Uh, I rolled a 19, but I rolled a six on damage. That's enough. Uh, you skewer <laughs> it. You, yeah. How did? How does? Uh, how does your laser rifle finish off this terrorfly? The terrorfly is like screeching in pain from being set on fire by the first shot. I, I carefully take aim and just fire another laser rifle right through its head. And it just nice. incinerates uh, before it even hits the ground. Poof. It's gone. Uh, and then I'm going to end my turn by moving a little bit more north towards the corpses of the other terraflies. A little bit away from Chimera. That way, in case he decides to do more stompy stompy, I'm not, you know, standing right in his path. Or both of us aren't in his path. 
Fair, fair. That's <laughs> for once someone's thinking about positioning because I always forget yeah. about that. <laughs> you know, as, as we have two groups stacked together and yeah. are just getting wrecked by anything that just happens to hit multiple people. <laughs> no, no, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. I've set things on fire. I've ended my turn. <laughs> All right. Nice. Uh, at the end of the round, the round swaps <laughs> over. Everyone refreshes. Um, cool. So let's see. Valet is going to activate. Going to okay. move three closer. Valet's going to get my car. Rifles. <laughs> Uh, Valet is going to, uh, he's going to pick a target within 20, which is Nempax. Um, oh, that, that would have been useful to know. Uh, I guess that is not an issue right now. Um, so, yeah, you see the missile pods open up again, uh, but this time it is shooting them all directly at Nempax, uh, Nempax 3 here. Uh, 8 will miss. Um, and then... <coughs> Uh, it is going to use its javelin rockets. As you see, two rocket pods on its back kind of rise up over its shoulders and fire three missiles straight up into the air. And all of you on your targeting computers see three hexes on the ground light up red. Um, so nice. it is going to designate three spaces. You should definitely go stand under them and get some friends raining down from the heavens. <laughs> so it is going to mark this space. It's going to mark this space. And it's going to mark this space. As you kind of see targeting locks from the sky aim down at those spaces. That north one, he must know something I don't. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to be Valet's turn. Uh, now Nempax is going to activate. Uh, and... Don't we go before them normally? Uh, it alternates at the end of round. You guys were the people who took the last turn of the round, so the other two sides get to go now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so Nempax activating instantly activates one of the javelin rockets that Valet started. So um, when a hostile character moves through, starts their turn in, or passes above one of the chosen spaces, they're instantly hit by a rocket. Um, so uh, the Nempax starts its turn as a rocket falls on its head, and it's going to go ahead and take five kinetic damage. Nice. And that is going to clear that space. Is that why he's called Valet? Because he's free parking missiles? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to see if Nempax recharges. It does. Nice. Recharges on a five and a six. Um... Comment disagrees. Sees you there, Rock. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do it's going to charge through rock, um, which has the side effect of also charging through Comet. Uh, I'm going to need both of you to make a uh, agility save. Okie doke. All right, I rolled a 17. 14. All right, both of those are successful. Neither of you uh, take any damage. I actually rolled a 16. I accidentally had an extra accuracy. 
Yeah, I don't know if I have an accuracy or not here. Uh, I don't think so. I just didn't turn it off. So mine's uh, 12. Does that still succeed? Uh, 12 would still succeed, yes. Okay. Yeah, so you're fine regardless. Cool. Um, and then it is going to turn and use its um, claws on you, Rock. Okay. Uh, 13 versus evasion. Uh, no, that doesn't hit. Nice. The... <laughs> insanely fast rock you see this thing dash past you you get out of the way easily in time uh it wheels on you rending at you with your claws but you're just too fast for it it can't get any hit with any purchase in uh that is going to be i'm pretty sure rock has turn. twice my evasion but i have twice <laughs> health <laughs> so you, right. out. you have 22 health uh i have like 19 Huh. 17. I have a I am a I am a tanky boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's back to you guys who wants to go first. <clears throat> um I don't I mean the turn's going to be real boring, but it is it would be nice Comet, to do. Comet, <laughs> do you want to go first since it's already used its turn for this round? Your yeah, shredded can... wouldn't wear off until the next full round. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. And um, maybe you can make, well, I guess whether you want to move or not is your choice. <laughs> right. Okay, so, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. yeah, I'll go. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll use Marker Light on Nimpax 3. So that's a full tech attack. Um, uh, oops, I'm talking to myself. Uh, on roll 20 i always do that um although there's nothing really to roll i i mean i there's i i need to roll tech attack against its e-defense so um i rolled a 13 uh it's e-defense i'm sure is nothing uh <laughs> yeah you succeed okay cool so on a success uh it takes two heat lock on and cannot benefit from soft cover until the lock-on is cleared. Additionally, once before the start of my next turn, when an allied target hits uh, your target, you may declare as a reaction they've hit a weak spot. Uh, and if it wasn't already, the attack becomes a critical hit. So basically, when someone attacks uh, Nempax 3, I could say, hey, that was, that was a crit. Um, you hit a weak spot. So, um, so it now has lock-on. Um, since I've inflicted lock on, it also has shredded, uh, and it also has this marker like light effect on it. And I don't know how the two heat works on a biological. It's just two creature. kinetic damage. Energy. Okay. Energy, cool. I'm sorry. Cool. Yeah. The way I imagine uh, marker light looking, by the way, is like it, you kind of see some lasers shoot out and scan the the enemy target um and then on your huds there are like hot spots on the nem packs that show like where he's weakest uh uh so you know sort of like where to attack so i'm like transmitting like like uh data to to your guys's hud so you, uh so you're Sounds more effective good. in attacking yep all right um that that's a full uh, tech attack for me. I'm not going to move. I'll go back to being invisible. Okay. Um, I guess any other act? That's it for me. Okay. I guess it's only us at this point because there's uh, unless some enemy that's going to pop up. I mean, there's still a yeah, concern we, who can attack. We still attack. got uh, another thing here. So I just need to check what <laughs> this Weapon thing means it says. Da, 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 da. Oh, interesting. OK, um, so uh, concern is going to. Uh, 
move down the wall to get a line of sight on what's happening. Uh, he raises his spear and points towards the Nempax. Uh, and as he does, uh, you see Valet uh, ready another volley. Uh, he's going to use his commander ability to allow Valet to use another attack. Uh, and since Nempax is locked on, against characters with lock on, Valet's weapons gain smart seeking and armor piercing. Oh, sweet. Um, so he is going to fire another series of missile pods at it. Does he consume the lock on as no, well? No, he doesn't does have it... to consume the lock. It's just because there's lock on on it. Gotcha. Is it just me or is Bob's NPCs synergizing with us better than we are? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say anything, but yes. Well, I guess Comet and I are doing all right. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys got a system. Uh, yeah. All right. So he rolls a 19 versus its E defense um, because it's a smart system. Uh, and the Nempax uh, doesn't really have an E-Defense. Uh, it's not very smart. So uh, on creatures that don't have an E-Defense, really, uh, it counts as eight for the purposes of the smart uh, ability. So definitely hits Nempax. Uh, and it is armor piercing. So that's going to do uh, its full four damage. Nice. Uh, that is enough to structure it. Nice. Ah, good deal. So let's see what happens to this guy. Um, the second health bar appears. Music changes. <laughs> oh shit, phase two. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, there's lyrics. And it's in Latin. <laughs> Wait, why does this thing have a cannon coming out of it? <laughs> and, 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 wing, and wings, like one's an angel wing and one's a devil wing. <laughs> all right so yeah that's its first bam so it rolls a five so it's just going to be like a glancing blow um which is the same for biologicals as it is for mechs which is just it is now impaired until the end of its next turn so it's 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 getting super fucked up um from all the things you guys are putting on it nice good uh, and then Concern still has an ability that it can use. Uh, it is going to use its Prowl ability, uh, which is a quick action. It, it uh, becomes hidden and moves its speed, ignoring engagement and not provoking reactions. So it disappears off of your sensors. Interesting. Okay. All right. Now it's back to you guys. Uh, mind if I go, Chuck? Oh, yeah, go for it. I'm not even sure what I'll be able to accomplish, so go ahead. I mean, I'm going to fire straight at that thing with All the right. barrage, and I'm going to consume the lock-on. You want <laughs> me to move first? No, no, no. I don't, I don't have... I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not going to hit you. I you might want to check to see if any of your weapons are line weapons, Jer. Uh, oh, wait. I think one of them is. Yeah. All right. I'll move. <laughs> no, I'm saying, do you want me to move? I mean, you can. One, two, you three, want. four. If I move there. Yeah, it won't matter. I have I have two line weapons, Jay. And it's never actually been a problem, but if I move if if I move closer to Chimera, which I didn't really want to, but I, I can move out of his way. Okay. So it won't hit you. Good, because that's what I'm going to be starting with. I'll be consuming the lock-on for... It's just for the first weapon attack, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to be firing the Soul Pattern Laser Rifle, and since this is the first attack this round, it does trigger Nuclear Cavalier, uh, if it hits. So, here we go. I rolled a 17. A 17 will hit. <clears throat> All right, hey, you hit a weak spot. That's a critical uh, That's hit. That's a critical hit. Yeah. So Nice. Yeah, roll I'll your D6 again, see if it's D6. better. 
six. Nope, I rolled a three the second time. And then I'll roll the 1d6 for Nuclear Cavalier. Or, yeah, which is a two. Do I reroll that again with a crit? Since it's attached to the weapon? Uh, that I, I don't know. Which ability is it? Nuclear oh, Cavalier. Oh. No, I, I mean, uh, Todd, what's the name of your ability that gives you that? Oh, Marker Light. Um, I, okay. It just says, uh, so Marker Light says, um, <clears throat> You may declare as a reaction that they have hit a weak spot. If it wasn't already, the attack becomes a critical hit. So if his attack it was a, a normal critical hit, would that apply to his nuclear cav cavalier as well? Uh, it's part of, uh, does it add nuclear cavalier? Does that add on to your weapon damage? It deals, it, uh, it's, I'll just read it. It says, the first ranged or melee attack roll you make during your turn while in the danger, do danger zone deals energy damage instead yeah. of kinetic or explosive and additionally deals 1d6 energy bonus damage on a hit. Yeah, no, absolutely. Roll it twice and take the better then. Yeah. Rolling the dice. Five. Okay, that one's better. All right, so, so it took uh, one burn, five energy damage from the attack, and then five additional energy damage from Nuclear Cavalier. Is that right? Yep. All right. So... so. So your lock on let me set it on fire. Lots Perfect. and lots of glorious fire. <laughs> <laughs> what was Meanwhile, the uh, <laughs> what was the first d6 you rolled? Uh, that was the reroll for the damage from the weapon. Ah, damage from the weapon. Gotcha. All right, and you take one heat from your soul yep. pattern, okay. which will bring me up to nine. Okay. Um, and since this is a barrage, I will follow that up with an assault rifle. All right. This will not be accuracy, so let me turn that off. Uh, 12. Versus AC. Uh, 12 will hit. And I rolled max damage, a 6. Oh, cool. And it is still shredded, yep. even though you've consumed lock-on, so... Yep. You're just destroying this thing. All right, uh, that is enough. You take out the final Nempax. Woo! I just imagine that it's screeching while it's just with my first shot, I set it on fire. So it's screeching. So I take advantage of it for some weak points and just riddle it with bullets and it just falls down. All right. Nice. nice. Uh, and as it falls down and just like as a, as a pile of meat, basically next to rock, um, you all uh, hear basically silence settle back down over the battlefield. CJ, um, you didn't have to move. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> All right. And yeah, that is. You, you, yeah, you're good. You're good. OK. Um, yeah. Uh, and at the end of uh, at the end of that uh, concern uh, who had gone cloaked. Uh, is going to reappear on sensors um, and uh, you all get like a, a radio ping, like a local local frequency radio ping uh, as uh, you're all getting basically just like the broadcast from concern. Uh, and you just hear a voice come over the radio, say. Who are all of you and why are you on this planet? Uh we have been sent here to find out what's happened on this planet. Perhaps uh, we can help each other. Perhaps. Um, uh, well, what's your story as uh, Evelyn kind of joins the conversation? We're here at the behest of some friends. Uh, I, while I wouldn't call them friends, our story is the same, and we probably, uh, I'm getting the feeling that neither of us can divulge more information than that. Uh, um, you will notice as you're talking, um, the IFF signals for the turrets switch off, uh, and they go orange on your targeting systems. 
I'll I'll say um uh do you know anything about what's happened on this planet? Where <laughs> is everyone? There's like a a decent silence uh as you're talking. Um valet, uh the kind of bulkier uh mech like starts moving south to like join up with concern uh, as they kind of like stare across the battlefield at the four of you. I don't know why you're here, but I'm getting the sense that you're here to find out something we already know. And I don't know if we should trust you. We were sent here uh, by an interested party to figure out what happened on this colony. Um, and when you find out what happened, what will you do? Well, uh, we need to assess the situation first. Um, but if there's any way we can help, if people are in trouble... Um, we may uh, try to assist you, provided your intentions are good. Then again, uh, maybe uh, learning about what's happened here is enough information for us, and our employers will be satisfied. Can't really know until we find out more. Would it be weird to stabilize during this? Uh, that would be that would be the equivalent of like they're having a conversation and you just like vent the heat out of your mech. It wouldn't be a big deal. OK, you can Everyone you can imagine stare. they're doing similar things. Everyone laughs and points at you. Ha <laughs> 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 He farted. <laughs> can I uh, just a private channel to us if I can? I'll just say, like, do you mean to lock on to one of them? This doesn't seem like it's going well. Uh, do you are you taking a stabilized rock? I am. Yeah. OK, so what are you doing with it? Because I need to keep track of all your numbers. Remember, oh, uh, just dumping my one heat and reloading my gun. It, it's simple, like next to nothing's happening. Yeah, actually, I'm going to dump my heat, too, <clears throat> for the record. Um... Well, while everyone's at it, I may as well. That is going to set my heat to five, Bob. Okay, so the three of you stabilize down to zero, zero, and five. Okay. Yep. When you lock on a target, uh, do they have any knowledge that you've locked on to them? Totally. My neural shunt marked okay. for death, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, because it's just I focus on a target. It doesn't actually use a lock-on effect. I'll say I'll just say to Rock. Um, well, uh, hold on. Uh, we I don't want to risk escalating the situation. May be able to uh, um, come to some sort of amicable agreement. Not by telling him the truth, and I don't think I've ever heard you lie before. Well, lucky for you all, I'm also very stupid, so <laughs> I'm probably too dumb to say something dangerous, because I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I was going to say, we might just want to go, go to formalities and just tell them exactly what the deal is. I, I don't know what the deal is. That's the whole thing. They seem to know something. I want to learn what they know. I mean, just put all the cards on the table and hope for the best. Um, switching back to the channel with Concern and Valet, um, I'll say, um, can you tell us anything about what happened in the city? Why are the... Um, beacons why have they been placed in the center of the city where is everyone why is why are there booby traps 
uh, set up all over the city. There's like a long silence. When are you going to thank us for helping you? <laughs> also a good question. We were hired by the people here. Who were you hired by? Um, well, we were hired by uh, a man named John Smith, and that's the truth. Representing who? Well, I don't uh, over, think over, I over can to, divulge uh, that information. Over, over to private link, um, Evelyn says, just, just fucking tell him, let's, or move, let's move on with our lives. Well, telling them that may have them open fire. I'm guessing they're not friends with Manticore. Say we have no love for them. I mean, heck, I mean, if we can probably come up with some sort of cover story so we all benefit from it. Um, We're going to tell them the truth. Tell them the whole truth. That we don't have any real love for Manticore. We're just trying to do a job in everyone's best interest. Yeah, there's no reason we have to say loyal to them. I mean, we just... Honestly, I'm more interested in seeing this through than, like, trying to protect Mandicorp. These aren't the people to talk to. Whoever hired them are the people to talk to. All right, fine. Here goes. Uh, switching back to the public channel, I'll say, okay, fine. We were hired uh, by Manticorp. And then Evelyn will chime in. And, and like, we, we don't really owe anything to them. They're like, it's just a job. Like, let's, let's just try to figure out what's, what went wrong and let's go off from there. How much are they paying you? Uh, I mean, I, my assistant kind of went over all the details. I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's a good sum of money, though. That's for sure. We can top it. Oh? Not us, but the people here. So what are you trying to achieve here? It's like a silence. Listen, uh, I think we'd be uh, open to negotiation here, but we're not going to take a job that we don't even know what we're supposed to do. We can't tell you anything until you've agreed. If you go past <sighs> this wall, you're enemies. This sounds very familiar. I mean, if we're enemies, then why don't we just, just drop one of those sonic resonators right on the middle of their base right here and turn it on on the way down? That's certainly one way to solve the issue. I mean, uh, clean up the aftermath, talk to Manticore. Be a stupid way of solving the problem. I mean, I was interested. They seemed pretty... Uh, this is, by the way, a channel that they can hear too, I'd say. I, I I was interested since they seemed so ready to pay us to keep us, you know, to make us betray a corporation, but they clearly don't care. If you're willing to stay their dogs, then we're going to fight anyway. I'm willing to work with reasonable people. I can't betray the safety of these people and tell you anything until I know you're safe. Are you... Protecting the people that live in this city? Yes. Because if that's the case, I think that's something I can get behind. That's good enough for me, yeah. I I mean, I have no complaints. And uh, there's no love lost uh, with me and Manticore, that's for sure. I mean, there's breaking the contract with the corporation, which... Well don't get me wrong, I'm okay with, but that's going to mean consequences for us. Yeah, did you actually... Did, did, this is Now, this is over a private channel because Astro. Um, did you actually read the contract? Like, what happens if we break contract? Ah, uh, Torse knows all those details. Ask her. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, I skimmed are, are, it. Are, are, we, are we within range, Bob, that I can ask her this? Uh, she's monitoring your guys' communications. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll ask her directly. Like, okay, so what happens if we don't do the job? Uh, I mean, it uh, it depends on how bad we get into this. Uh, I mean, we could end up blackballed. It it depends on how much we can disavow, really. Can't we just tell Manticore what we found, um, and we didn't meet anyone? 
They don't need to know the rest. Good enough for me. Hey, I, uh, I looked these guys up. Um, they're part of some group. Um, they're called the Nobilis Affair. Um, what do you know about this group? Nothing. Their name, hmm. that they've shown up on the border regions recently, but they're ghosts. Hmm, interesting. There's no, like, warrants out for them or anything like that? It's all very low-key. Noblest affair, you said? Uh, so for your guys' spelling, it's N-O-B-L-E-S-S-E. A F F A I R E. Got it. Did someone else write that down? I I got it. Uh, I just oh, got it. There, perfect. Uh, almost Chimera. There's an E at the end of a fair. In true Astro fashion. <laughs> Somebody else write that down. Uh, I, I want that to be. You got I want that, that right. I want that in character. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I was spell that into the ground with my uh, with my laser rifle here, just in case. I was thinking about hot pockets. Uh, Torse sends you what info she has, which is nothing, um, and you basically see kind of like their their company sigil basically uh which is a masked <clears throat> skull wearing a crown hmm. that's pretty badass I'm not gonna lie kind of seems like they're pirates so so it's their jolly roger i mean why do we care well i just i just think um uh, hey some... in for a penny in for a pound if we're gonna you know turn our backs on this manticore place then it pirates and rebels and brigands are who we're going to start working with you know oh no no i mean i'm i'm on board i'm just saying i'm, I'm sure we can come up with a way gotta to be careful with them too i'm sure we can come up with something to keep spanik we happy as well but let's just um keep them as a keep them as an afterthought for now i guess is the way to word it you you should probably play in mind that Manticore is not happy with whatever we do here. Bluff it. I, I just, if there's a video screen, then Chimera sees me shrug and shake my head. <laughs> I'm just gonna sigh and say, what, do whatever you want to do, Astro. We'll just have to take the consequences. But uh, Chimera... I don't think Manticorp, Manticorp and big corporations aren't. Don't let things like this go lightly. I'm just they, saying. What are they gonna know? If they, if they knew what was going on here, they wouldn't have sent us to check things out. Uh, well, I'm starting to bleed from my nose here, so I'm gonna end my neural shunt now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you should take care of that. Uh, as as I do that, my mech starts like standing up, and the braces come off that are like holding me in place. Ah. Uh. I'm just saying. Keep this in mind. Whatever we tell them, it's a highly likely they will try and double check. So if we tell them there is nothing, they will probably send someone down here. I'm just, I, we don't have to tell them that it's nothing. We could just, you know, leave out some details. Like, that we help the pirates. Gentlemen, Everything lady, else we can tell them. Maybe we worry about that later. There's two heavily armed people in front of us waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say let's 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 go let's, well, go let's go along with it. Let's go. One heavily armed and one pea shooter. I'll um turn the public channel back on and say sorry, just conferencing with my uh compatriots here. Um I think uh we would like to join your little group. What is it you call yourselves? The Nobles Affair? You won't be joining us, but we'll welcome you working alongside of us. The people here have enough to pay you, I assure you. Um, Torse, uh, I'll say on to uh, on another channel. I'll say Torse. Um, can you send over the payment details of our contract? Um, excuse me. You might want to hold on to that. 
Uh, you're going to want to talk to Joyce once we get back to camp. Uh, I just want to know what their what Manticore's paying us so we can they can exceed it. I feel like that's something that you should uh, always be mindful of, Astro. I know I'm looking at the numbers is probably not something you've done before, but uh, <laughs> or paid too much attention to. But you should probably start doing it. Ah, oh, so boring to read all those legal documents, though. Yeah, but I figured you of all people would want to know how much you're worth. I just saw a lot of zeros. It seemed like a lot. Listen, when I was big time, I had an assistant handle all the financial details. I would just ask my assistant, can I buy this? Can I afford this? And they'd tell me if I could or not. It's a lot Are you easier. saying this over the public or the private channel? <laughs> I'm saying this over the public channel. Can... Uh, can all of you get up the cliffs or do we need to open the gate for you? Uh, I'll start moving up towards them. Yeah, I'd say open up the gate. Uh, I was going up the cliffs, but <laughs> all right. you, you can do the cliffs. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't know if all of you have jump jets and they don't know either. I, so they're, I, I, <laughs> they're asking if you guys need to go up the stairs. I, yeah, I I'll, definitely don't I will have jump need jets. to. Uh, I, I will need to go through the gates. Okay. I will need to go through the gates. I'm pretty sure I lost my Ava system. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're it's gonna, only in space, anyways. Yeah, those only <laughs> those only help with uh, EVA maneuver. So that's underwater or in outer space. Uh, is the cliff quicker? <sighs> that's how we go. All right, I'll just follow them up the cliff. Yeah, they're so right uh, they're going to, like, start basically... They're going to, like, link up with you guys in terms of, like, as a traveling group. Um, and they're <laughs> just going to start boosting up the cliffs. Uh, they're going to open the gate for you. Um, so you guys are going to be able to to move up the stairs behind them. Um, but you guys are going to follow them up the mountainous regions. Um, and okay. that is... Uh, you guys have successfully navigated the uh the combat there um, on, the on the bright side none of our units are claptrap chair uh stairs <laughs> are not our worst nightmare <laughs> <laughs> uh so as you guys start following them um the uh the the one who's been in contact with you um concern uh opens the channel back up to you all and just says the name's Casper. Nice to meet you. Casper, good to meet you. My name's Astro. Rock. Evelyn. Dine. He gestures uh, at the other uh, Mac, uh, and he says, uh, that over there is Heathcote. Uh, you'll meet him when we get out of our Max. So... Now that we've agreed to help, can you tell us what the hell's going on in this city? Uh, an exodus. Oh. Who had money on exodus? Oh, wait, <laughs> uh, I think I did. Damn it. Damn it, I owe you 20, I owe you 20 credits. <laughs> oh, I guess that means no pizza party for you, Evelyn. Was there a, a oh revolt? no, we're having a pizza party. Evelyn's paying for it. Oh yeah, we're definitely having a pizza party. <laughs> I guess that means Rock Trees is the toppings, right? <laughs> uh, just we'll what we'll the heck, they're just money. wondering what the heck we're talking about pizza for. We'll have enough for a couple pizza parties. If we uh, succeed in this mission. So, Exodus, was there a <laughs> revolt? Uh, more of a soft revolt. Um, the people in charge here are, um, tired of, uh, taking orders from Manticore. Uh, my people have been in contact with them for the past couple of years, and, uh, well, we made a deal. We help get them off planet in return for pay, and, well, we're gonna... We're going to make as uh, efficient an exodus as possible. So you were probably expecting a team from Manticorp like ours um, to arrive and investigate. Is that why the city's so booby trapped? 
combat, I don't think we're the first team. That's uh, caught on pretty quick. I was hoping that we uh, cleared out enough of the wreckage from the previous team that you wouldn't have noticed they'd been here. It wasn't so much wreckage as just foresight, I guess. You did a good job of cleaning out the wreckage, but um, I was able to get into the electrical plant and find enough logs to tell that this was staged. Uh, yeah, <laughs> funny that. Uh, you'll have to tell Joyce that. She'll find that funny. Why not just blow the reactors? Uh, we need there to be a place for them to investigate. It buys us time. If there's just a crater, they're going to look for the next settlement on the map. Who's Joyce? Uh, she's, I guess, our de facto leader right now. Uh, she used to be the head of the power plant. Uh, now she's in charge of organizing all this. And how can we help? <sighs> help us buy time. There's, a. Uh, Another mission we want to run before we get the people out of here. And we'll talk with you all about that after we meet with Joyce. But first, she's probably going to want to tell you what's going on here on the planet and what the people are doing. If we do the additional work that we need to do, then you'll we'll owe you as well. Sounds good. One more thing, you're offering us, you're offering to pay us more than one of the largest mega corporations in the galaxy. How is it that you have so much, so many resources? We don't. The people here mine Iridium Alum. I'm sure they can spare some before you leave. Guess that makes sense. Whoever has the Iridium Alum has all the power. For now. All right, well, uh, sounds good. Let's be on our way then. All right, and as you follow uh, Casper and Heathcote uh, to the mining camp in the mountains, uh, we're going to call that at the end of our first session tonight. Um, we Oops. are going to pick back up uh, with all of you uh, arriving at the mining refugee camp, and we'll see where you guys choose to go from there. Sounds good. Cool beans. Yep. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's happy. 